Hello everyone and welcome to another video of testing, intrigue, mystery, romance, just kidding. We are looking into engines, we are looking into cooling systems, specifically radiators. Now why we're doing this? In my last video there was a ton of comments and I love it. I read all the comments guys, so make sure when you post them you know I'm going to read them. I may not respond but I do know everybody that's written things and actually what was very interesting in my last video there were excellent suggestions moving forward suggestions that i've implemented here in this video now some of the questions that i had also were oh like we could use really intricate systems like this with heat exchangers and radiators and whatever yes we can and that may be a video that i look at another time but for the current time being, the reason why I'm looking specifically at radiator systems is because I'm trying to find what's the easiest or most simple way that I could fix my old ships. I'm having a tough time now with the engines overheating on my ships where I don't really want to go and retrofit more than 10 ships, especially when it's more complex retrofitting that requires changes in the engine room and the layouts, all that stuff. So I'm looking into easy fixes, things that can be done that can potentially make the ships work better. So like I said, I was looking at the comments and I got a lot of ideas for some more testing and that's what I'm going to be showing you here. So I do thank the community, my Discord server, the YouTubers, everybody for watching and for commenting and interacting on these videos. So pretty much what we have here is this second motor is the base case that we had previously, except now to all of these cases, I've added a valve and a gas relief valve. So my idea is to first see if that has any impact whatsoever on these engines. Now, one of the comments on my YouTube video were that if radiators are in an enclosed space, that they will heat up the space around it. So I wanted to see if that is actually going to decrease the performance of the radiator. So in this one here, base case, just a simple radiator here, same thing, base case, simple radiator, except the radiator is inside a compartment. So we'll see if they perform any differently. There were some interesting comments regarding the flow rate. So I do want to play a little bit more with the flow rate and see what happens. So we just have our old example here. We do have the gas relief valve but it's pretty much the old one here we have the same idea as well as the previous video there were some comments regarding uh, people noticing the temperature actually start to drop so I want to see if I could recreate that and get the temperature to drop again on this one so that's the fourth engine fifth engine people were saying that if the engine and radiator are moving that they will decrease the temperature faster because obviously radiators, you've got air flowing through the little um, metal, uh, there's a name, vents or something, and decrease the temperature. I want to see if I could recreate that here with this fan. Now, maybe it's not, re maybe we can't recreate it, but I'm planning on doing a test with having one of these engines actually moving. So we'll see that later in the video. This, these two are identical. I just went and added these manual valves, but what this system is, and they're identical, is that we have pumps that can pump in, so you can see this is in, so they pump in air into the system, both upstream and downstream of the radiator, so they're identical, to see if changing the pressure of the air can pressurize the system, make it flow better or not, and then I have relief valves for the gas as well, so there is a gas relief valve on both setups so we won't be losing our liquid coolant but rather changing the pressure with air and this last one is not being used so these are the cases we're going to take a look at now let's see what happens when we do so we set the 75 percent throttle and yes the throttle is not what overheats our engines it's the rps and if we look here our rps on our first five cases are the same Obviously the heating will not be the same, but right now these valves are closed, so we're going to go ahead and open them up. So right now everything's open here, so this should be cooling off this engine, everything should be flowing through here. Here we're getting flow as well. So we just sit back and let's see what happens. Our, right now all the temperature is more or less the same. Number 3 is the highest, and that's the one that has the valves. 
for the variable flow valves. But everything else is just pretty much steady at 80%. So the first thing I want to do is play with this. If I turn the, down the flow that enters the radiator 70%, we're still getting some temperature increase. If we do it the other way, still some temperature increase. Now, granted, this is not sort of the steady state, or this is not the final um, operating temperature, so things may be a little different here. Now, one thing also to note is that right now, the radiator inside the compartment and outside the compartment are identical. So, it does not actually change, even the temperature of the engines is the same. Actually, this one's slightly less than this one. So there is some variable there, but it's pretty much the same. Now here again, we can work on reducing the flow rate. And we th that does get us lower atmospheric pressure but it's still increasing the temperature slowly. Now if we open up this valve, it actually didn't change even the atmospheric pressure of the fluid, or the pressure of the fluid. So that doesn't really do anything in this case. In this case here, if I open that up, didn't change anything. Now this one's operating temperature. This one's still increasing. Let's go here. So around 93 is the operating temperature. What was interesting is this one has 92. So being having the radiator trapped in here actually did that. Now let's see if we turn this fan on. Does that change anything in our engine? Because the game may not actually see this as wind, like I'm not, I'm standing up here and it's not really adding wind on top of it. It's more so for moving the vehicle it's attached to, so I don't expect a difference in this case here, this one here, any different than these ones. So these two are pretty much the same again, and this is also 93. So this doesn't work. It should work, it should create wind, but the nature of the game, it does not. Now let's use this again here. If we take all this uh, coolant out and turn this off, let this pump up. Did we drop the temperature at all? See, this is reducing the temperature. Okay, this is one of the comments because now there's no liquid in here. Like if I just turn this off and just release all the liquid, there's nothing in here, but now our engine is going to suffer. It's going to overheat like crazy. So what we have to do is make sure that we are allowing the um, allowing everything in. So we're allowing, we're pumping water in. So now we're getting a low pre lower pressure of the piping. Just looking here, it's around, it's still kind of fluctuating. But our engine temperature remained similar, a little higher, 95. Okay, now these ones here, if I allow full variable valve opening, it does start to drop. So obviously more flow rate does result in more cooling. That was one of the comments on the video actually, and it just logical, it makes sense. So we actually dropped the temperature down to 100 from the case where we just had um, 50% reduced flow. Now if we reduce the flow here, the temperature is increasing. If we reduce the flow here, the temperature is still increasing. So I don't see a variable flow change to any of this. Over here we have this one was opened, we closed it now. Again, it should be very similar to these two, it is. That one is still the lowest temperature of all. So that's interesting. Again, this is pretty much debunked, doesn't work. These two are going to test later. This did not really do anything. Let 
Now we start stop pumping in water. Let's see if, it, if that changes anything. No, this one seemed to find its like operating temperature again a little higher. This one's operating temperature. So back to the board here at 75% throttle or around 12, 12 or so 12.25 RPS. The lowest temperature is the sealed compartment. Then 92 to 93 is our temperature for our other cases. And then these ones are a little higher with this one being the highest. Presumably the variable flow valve does reduce flow in general. Just like how when you have uh, multiple um, of anything in a row, like transmissions or so, or clutches, they will actually reduce the power of that clutch, or of the power going through it. So I'm guessing that type of thing's happening here, whereas all these other cases are wide open with no restriction to their uh, flow. But very interesting, I was able to get some sort of drop on my video, I actually did notice that. Anyway, this still is inconclusive in terms of what we're getting. Okay, so 74% with these two engines here, they're identical. The only difference between, well, there's no difference between them. The difference is what we're going to do to them. Okay, so this here is pumping in before the radiator. So let's try this. That's, they may not do anything until the engines are at operating temperature, which we're kind of getting at slowly, but let's try the opposite things. So right now we're pumping in here, and we're pumping in after the radiator. Between these two, our pressures are pretty much the same of our fluid. Let's go turn this up a little bit. 76. Now one thing that I'm going to do is make sure that our base case is also running alongside these ones. So if I take a look at my base case right there, 52 or so, these are 55. So we'll wait for them to reach operating temperature and then we're going to see what the difference is if any, but let's turn this pump on and this pump on. So now this one is upstream of the uh, radiator and this one is downstream of the radiator. So now we're inserting air, just air, into the system, pumping it in pretty much. Back to the drawing board here. These two are both at identical temperatures, 82. So is this one. So they're still heating up. Now we do have these valves to actually relieve the air from the system. We're not going to turn that on just yet. They all reached operating temperature at pretty much the same time. These pumps not doing anything different than the system that we have here as our base system. You can see it's at 94. These ones are also at 94. If we open the relief valves, you can see that it's letting something out. But does that change the temperature of the engines? It does not. So putting a gas valve, actually, these are a little higher. This one specifically is a little higher than this one. This one's just about the same temperature. So the one, I don't know, see, sometimes, sometimes the game just stumps me. Right now, you'd think that we have exactly the same thing going on. Open... And this one is open on this one here. Closed. Oh, interesting. And closed. Okay, never mind. My bad. So, there is some difference here. Here, we have the valves open. So we're pumping in and pumping out. And for... Or pumping in with the pump and relieving through the relief valve. And here, we are not. So in this case here... We're just sort of pumping in, but looking back with these numbers, see we're approaching 96 here. We're approaching 96.8, so identical, and then this one is already 96.5, so 
Interesting. Just the difference of putting these relief valves here seem to have increased the temperature of the engine by around one degree. So that's worth noting for all of you watching and wanting to think of your own systems. But our base system is still no better than this system here with the pump. So this still doesn't help us for the case of the ship. For the final trial, here we are actually moving on our little platform. And what I'm going to do is start the engines up. And you'll see which ones I have set up. So we're going to put 75% throttle on these first three. This one has a radiator inside the compartment, whereas this one has a radiator outside of the compartment. So in theory, this one is not getting any wind flow, whereas these two are. Now I also just put here a different orientation. So this radiator is laying down, this one's vertical. The vertical one does have more piping, so keep in mind that. But if we go over here and take a look at our temperatures, They're pretty much, they're, they're fully identical. So this did not prove that moving the radiator, having the radiator physically moving doesn't, does not actually drop the temperature. In real life it does. In real life a car works that way because the little vents or the grills on the radiator actually work more efficiently when you're going at high speeds. But this one has no airflow or air movement inside, it's in a sealed compartment yet it's doing the exact same thing. In fact, I could see it's a little lower. This one's at 94, this one's already reached 95. So this one's still lower, the one in the sealed compartment. So giving speed to a vehicle, now maybe drastic, maybe if you do like 100 knots or something, maybe then it will, but I, I don't see that it's actually changing anything from what I see these numbers. And if we look here, we're hitting that sort of 97 mark now. So 75 degrees, or 75% on the throttle, and our operating temperature is, we'll see where it is, actually, until we hit that bridge up ahead, so. Funny enough, these two are actually hotter. You can see this one's just broken 99, and these are actually at a hotter place, the temperature of these engines. They're kind of maybe at operating temperature, they're not increasing very fast anymore. And one thing that's actually boggling my mind is if we look back at the test that we did earlier at st when we were stationary, the engines were not really reaching 100 degrees. I'd say they were topping out around 94, especially these two there. And now we're kind of reaching that 100 mark. Note the engines are, not, are still connected to the generators. They're not connected to the propeller. The propeller is just an electric propeller. So really, I can't see what is fully going on, but yeah, you're right, we have, we have higher temperature engines, or at operating temperature, and yet there's no real difference other than the fact we're moving now. Let's go and open the valves. If I open these valves, let's see if that drops it at all before we get into the bridge. Nope. It didn't really drop it. This one's still a little lower. These are a little ho hotter, but like marginally. So they didn't slow down in terms of what they, what was happening to them. So I really couldn't tell you. And again, don't think that this is a wasted experiment. We didn't get any conclusive results of what to do, but we did get conclusive results of what not to do. And sometimes that's just as important. Now, please, please, please let me know in the comments if you guys think there's anything else we should test with regards to the radiator style engines. Of course, we may have motors connected to other systems such as the heat exchangers and whatnot. Those ones may work differently, but for, this, for, for the purpose of this video, I'm just looking into what the best way I can fix my existing ships with the least impact to the ship. But honestly, some of these are not even least impact and they're still not really turning down that temperature you can see here still increasing so um yeah thank you for watching hopefully this still solidified some knowledge with regards to the radiators and how they work let me know your own findings from experience maybe you had success creating a radiator that um 
that cools it down as we're moving or a heat sink or whatever but right now I'm not getting that in this at least um, but yeah let me know what you guys find let me know if you had any success with pumping in or out I did sort of base these experiments on the information that was posted on the comments and I, I'd love to see a sort of example or a case example of someone having success heating or cooling an engine bait versus a base case. If you do, that would be amazing. I'm definitely going to showcase it in a video. My email is on my YouTube, so you can email me your creations if you find that you have something worth sharing or send a link to your Steam um, workshop and all that good stuff. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more content, for more creations, for more tests, and as always, Happy Storm Racing, everyone.